Welcome back everybody to our virtual classroom. I want to take a little bit of time just to introduce our next book to you. Um, we're going to be reading Lady Susan by the very famous author Jane Austen. You've probably heard of her novel Pride and Prejudice or maybe Emma, which is currently in, theater, in theaters. Um, Jane Austen is a very well-respected uh, novelist, one of the um, forebearers of the modern novel as we know it today. And we're going to be reading uh, a short piece by her called Lady Susan. So Jane Austen, here are her dates, 1775 to 1817. She's writing in the same time period as uh, Horace Walpole, who's a little bit earlier actually, but generally speaking, the 18th century. And she's also writing at the same time that uh, William Blake was working. In fact, Lady Susan was written about the same time that Blake published Songs of Innocence. So it's something to keep in mind. All of these authors are working within the very same period of time. You might note the vast difference in styles and the different political ideas and even the surprisingly modern elements that make them resonate today. Walpole's, um, Horace, Horace Walpole's Castle of Otranto innovated a uh, very contemporary kind of popular literature, Gothic literature. William Blake's uh, Songs of Innocence and Songs of Experience offered a kind of revolutionary poetic politics, and he used form, a very simple childlike form, to achieve a wide audience for his politics. And now, Jane Austen's uh, novella, Lady Susan, will do a lot of exploring gender norms and social norms. So these are all quite modern authors in some respects. Their style, of course, is a product of their time. They're writing in the 18th century, so their writing style definitely is you know, outside of Blake at any rate, a bit archaic, a little bit different, okay? Um, Jane Austen lived during a time of almost constant war in England, which a lot of people don't really think too fully about. Um, she had six siblings. She had only one sister, right? Her name was Cassandra, and she had five brothers. Two of them uh, are in the Navy or were in the Navy. She was the youngest of her family, and her father was a clergyman, which is interesting to think about given uh, the content of Lady Susan. So um, anyway, Jane Austen, uh, these are her dates. Um, I've included two images here that you might find interesting. Um, the one to the left, the sketch is that looks sort of unfinished, um, is a, a pencil and watercolor sketch by her sister, Cassandra Austen, from around 1810. Um, just seven years before she died. The portrait on the right is the portrait that you will most likely find if you do any searching for Jane Austen at all on the web. Um, this is actually a kind of um, made up portrait based on Cassandra Austen's picture. Uh, you can tell that it's made up because in part, there are lots of reasons you can tell it's made up, but. Uh, but for our purposes, what's really interesting is that she has a wedding ring on her finger. You can see it right here in um, on her hand, right? Uh, she has a wedding ring. Um, Austin, of course, was unmarried. Um, she never married throughout her life. Uh, and that is something that you might think about as you're reading this novella. Austin wrote a ton of novels, and I mentioned uh, that you might know um, some of these from film. Um, currently, Emma is uh, in theaters right now. That's her 1816 novel, one of her, her most popular novels. Um, but she's also uh, the author of Pride and Prejudice and several other books. Um, we're going to be reading Lady Susan, which was written around 1794, 1794, 1795, and it was published posthumously in 1871, so well after her death, okay? Um, it was published in the second edition of her nephew's memoir of Jane Austen. So he um, dug it up out of her, um, her correspondence and her letters and her, her notes, and he published it after her death in 1871, but Austen wrote it much earlier, around 1794. 
Okay. So this is actually quite a very early novel. It comes before Sense and Sensibility, which is her first novel in 1811. Okay. All of these books uh, have been made into films, um, and a lot of them multiple times. Uh, you might remember the movie from the 1990s called Clueless with uh, Alicia Silverstone in it, set in Beverly Hills. That's a contemporary version of Emma. Uh, and Lady Susan actually also has a film uh, just recently, I think from 2017, I wanna say, um, a film was released called Love and Friendship. Um, it is on Amazon Prime and it's free and I think you would very much enjoy watching it. Uh, but do keep in mind that the book is different from the film, so please read the book uh, instead of just watching the movie, okay? Jane Austen is known as a writer for her wit uh, and her very close observational skills. Um, she wrote in a very clever way with a lot of pointed humor that verges really on satire. And uh, she uses her close observational skills to look closely and uh, critically at the nuances of human behavior. So you can see where satire would come into play, right? Um, she's poking fun at um, things that she thinks are problematic or wrong. So this is the kind of um, observational skill that makes her a great commentator on things like economic class, social class, norms and customs, habits, manners, and so on. Uh, Lady Susan, as I mentioned very briefly before, is an epistolary novel. This means it's told in a series of letters. So epistle, epistolary, epistle, right? Paul to the Corinthians, right? Epistle, whatever. Um, epistolary novel is a novel that's told in letters, okay? This has 41 letters in it and a conclusion that is not in letter form, but which is written presumably by the author. Uh, the main character in Lady Susan is Lady Susan Vernon. Uh, here's a, a gif of her from the recent film that I just mentioned. Um, she is something of an anti-hero. So she's the protagonist of the novel in many respects. She's the focus of the novel. Um, we come to kind of, we like her in many respects, um, and yet we also will kind of dislike her for her actions. And you'll see what I mean when you read the novel. Um, she's something of an anti-hero. Uh, she's definitely a strong advocate for herself. Um, she knows exactly what she wants and she will go out and get it and she will do anything necessary in order to do so. Um, and this of course puts her in uh, a, a particular, this of course gives her a kind of reputation, a bad reputation. Okay? Um, she's very clever. Uh, she knows how to make people think and feel and do exactly what she wants them to. So Lady Susan Vernon. Um, each letter in the novel is, uh, is written from, of course, one character to another. So as you read, pay attention uh, to who's writing to whom, and you can hear how each character has different agendas, different personalities, and so on. Especially Lady Susan. Lady Susan changes her character uh, writing um, in her letters when she writes to her friend, her very close friend, Alicia Johnson, versus when she writes to anybody else, okay? She very clearly has um, a, a sort of goal in her writing and uh, in, in the letters that she's trying to elicit a response. Um, and she uses a lot of subterfuge, subterfuge um, and, um, and cunning to sort of make her letters be interpreted the way she wants them to be interpreted. And because it's an epistolary novel, we get to see her her agenda, right? We get to see her shifting point of view as she writes from these different these different letters. Um, each letter uh, also indicates where it was written. Um, so take a look at the um, header information at each letter. It will typically give you a place from where it was written and a date. And this can help you understand how the plot progresses. Okay? And like I mentioned, there's also a conclusion to the letters, which is written by an unnamed narrator, and we think it's you know most likely a stand-in for the author. So characters, Lady Susan, um, she's brilliant, witty, clever, beautiful. She's a very recent widow um, and she's forced to sell her home to pay off debts accrued by living too extravagantly. Um, she's been staying with family friends, the Mainwarings in a place called Langford, which is a made up name in England. Um, she has also been amorously involved with Mr. Man Manwaring. Um, man, she has a daughter, uh, Lady Susan has a daughter named Frederica, and she's trying to get Frederica married uh, to a guy named Sir James Martin. 
Um, even though the Man Ring's daughter has also kind of um, set her cap for Sir James. Lady Susan is emphatically not the mothering type. Um, she is very sociable. Uh, she's a flirt. Um, she likes to be out and about. Uh, her best friend is Alicia Johnson, uh, who is married to a wealthy tradesman, um, and they both live in London. So here's uh, some images over here on the right-hand side of the screen. These are just GIFs that are drawn from, well, the first one is, the second one is a GIF. The first one is just a screenshot. I couldn't make it move. <laughs> um, at any rate, uh, these are screenshots and GIFs from uh, Love and Friendship, which is the film adaptation of the novel. Uh, another important character is Mrs. Catherine Vernon, who uh, was who is married to Mr. Vernon, and Mr. Vernon is uh, Lady Susan's husband's brother, okay? So basically, um, Mr. Vernon is Lady Susan's brother-in-law, and Mrs. Catherine Vernon, um, who descends from an aristocratic family named the, named the de Courcys, um, they, they live together, of course, in a place called Churchill, and these are uh, two other important characters, um, her in-laws. Mr. Vernon uh, likes Lady Susan pretty well, um, but Catherine Vernon is much more skeptical and she's heard lots of rumors about Lady Susan's morality. And um, it's also important to note that Lady Susan sought to keep them from marrying. Um, and you learn about that in the beginning of the novel. They have a bunch of young children. Um, Catherine Vernon and Lady Susan write the most letters in the novel um, of all of the other characters. Uh, and so, as a result, they're set up as kind of opposing figures in a way. A few other characters, Sir Reginald and Lady de Courcy. Remember, these are the um, uh, these are the aristocratic parents of Catherine Vernon, uh, and uh, these are aristocrats um, like Lady Susan. They live in a fancy place called Parklands. Uh, their children, of course, are Catherine, Mrs. Vernon, and Reginald de Courcy, who is one of the main male characters in the story. There are a group of people called the Mainwarings. The Mainwarings. Um, these are this is a family. Uh, they're family friends of the Vernons and also the Johnsons. Uh, Mr. Mainwaring is very handsome. Um, and quite promiscuous. Uh, he married a wealthy woman, though he has a, only a little bit of money of his own. Um, he pursues Lady Susan, and Lady Susan pursues him throughout the novel, so they have an extramarital affair. Uh, Miss Mariah Mainwaring is his sister, and, um, and his wife, Mrs. Mainwaring, was the ward of Mr. Johnson, so that's how they're connected. Um, Reginald de Courcy is Catherine Vernon's brother. He's also the son of Reginald and Lady de Courcy. He's very handsome, he's very upright, he's very moral. Um, he falls in love with Lady Susan, but he was initially skeptical about her. Uh, but eventually he's won over by her charm, her beauty, her manner of speaking, the arguments that she makes, the defenses that she marshals um, when they converse. Here he is uh, from the, the film, the contemporary film, um, and he's saying, Lady Susan, congratulations on being about to receive the most accomplished flirt in all England. Um, this other image up here, it, it, it is a GIF, but I can only get a still image of it for the purposes of this um, presentation. Uh, but here she's talking to her friend, Lady Susan is talking to her friend, Alicia Johnson, and she's talking about Mrs. Mainwaring. Okay. And Lady Susan says, a horrid woman, deranged. If she were going to be jealous of her husband, Mr. Mannering, she should not have married such a charming man. <laughs> so that gives you a little bit of a sense of the character. Um, a few other characters, Alicia Johnson, whom I just mentioned, she's very attractive, clever, coquettish, very much like Lady Susan. Um, they scheme together to ensure that they can remain their own women and fulfill their own desires. Um, here is uh, Lady Susan and Alicia Johnson going up the stairs in their in Alicia's London home, and Lady Susan is saying to her friend, "What a mistake you made marrying your husband. He's too old to be governable and too young to die." And that's a direct quote from the novel, uh, by the way. So again, a bit of characterization here. Uh, Mr. Johnson, Alicia's husband, is uh, a tradesman. He lives in London, and he was the guardian um, to Mrs. Mainwaring um, before she married. Uh, and finally, Sir James Martin, who is a wealthy bachelor, um, and he's a bit simple-minded, and this is the guy that uh, Lady Susan is trying to marry her daughter off to. 
Um, oh, I think I forgot to put Frederica in there. <laughs> well, that's not surprising. <laughs> She's kind of a forgettable character <laughs> in my in my book. Um, Lady Susan does have a daughter, Frederica, um, who is sort of at school for most of the novel, and then she runs away from school and uh, seeks shelter with um, the Vernons at Churchill. Uh, and then her mother goes through various machinations to try to um, get her married to uh, Sir James Martin. Um, and I won't spoil the ending for you. Okay, so I've got a reading guide for you. Um, there are a few questions here on this reading guide. I would really like you to follow along with this reading guide as you read the novel. Um, I've put a version of this up on our shared Google Drive, okay? So you can access it and you know use it on your own computer and type it, type your responses out if you like. I'm not gonna collect this, but the discussion board posts will be drawn from this reading guide.